Hello there and welcome back to my channel. By my fourth year of teaching, I had fully embraced going digital and Google Drive had taken over my file organization. Paper piles? No thank you. Paper is the manure! Filing cabinet? Don't know her. Binders? I did keep some binders, if we're being completely honest. I got rid of all my binders with paper copies, but I did keep my student data binders. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to create a student data binder so you have easy access to all the necessary papers and you're ready to go for meetings and conferences. Now let me be clear, this student data binder would be used in addition to my digital data organization. I personally organized all my data through Google Sheets and I do have a set of editable Google Sheets templates for data that I will link for you down in the description box. I personally just think it's nice to have a physical binder that you can easily bring with you to meetings, whether it's grade level meetings, faculty meetings, IEP meetings, or be able to open and access during conferences. I mentioned having that Google Sheets spreadsheet, but a lot of those sheets can actually be printed and added to a physical binder as well. So let's jump into it by going over the materials you need. It's pretty basic, don't worry. First, you do need a binder. I'm using just a regular one inch binder and I do like the ones that have the clear view cover on the front so I can add a cover and a binder spine, but the actual size of binder you get will depend on how many students you have and how many papers you plan on storing in the binder. But I personally love the Avery brand and I will link these for you down in the description box. The second thing you need are a set of dividers. And that brings me to tip number one. I recommend using numbered dividers. That way you can actually reuse the same set of dividers year after year, and you can just update your student roster to let you know which student coordinates with each number. These once again are the Avery brand. I love their products and I love just like the rainbow colors. This set has up to 31 tabs, but there are black and white versions as well as other versions with different numbers of tabs. So these will be linked down below, but do a little bit of searching on Amazon. You never know what you could find. Next, you need the various printed sheets. So for me, that includes a binder cover. This is a set of editable bright binder covers that are in my TPT store and I will link for you. They also come with the binder spines, but obviously that is optional. Then you need a student roster and you have a couple options. This is a kind of a larger version just to help my eyes as I'm getting older, <laughs> but you will notice it goes onto a front and a back. So you also could print a roster onto a single page like this. It's all just personal preference. This is obviously a little bit smaller, but it's nice because they're all there at one glance. Then you also need your class data sheet. So that might include like monthly data, whether it's reading levels or minutes spent on different programs, whatever works for you. It might include assessment data for your class. It might include a data analysis sheet for your class. And again, this one is front and back. It might include like a grades overview for all the students in your class or clipboard cruising sheets. Clipboard cruising is just when you have a sheet on a clipboard and you walk around your classroom and make like anecdotal notes as you observe students. And so maybe you're gonna keep those in your binder as well. Then you're gonna need your student overview sheets. So here is just a blank student overview sheet. You will notice this is one that I could print out for every student in the class at the beginning of the year but I also can customize it. So I could go ahead and have the student's name typed on there and the school information so I don't have to hand write it. And this is something I could print out throughout the year as I update it with student information instead of handwriting it in. And to go along with that, you might also have individual like progress tracker sheets. So if I'm working on a specific student on something like reading accuracy, I could have that printed out as well. And then finally, you're gonna need a three hole punch because we're gonna be putting these in a binder. So we need to be able to hole punch. Now that does bring me to tip number two. I personally recommend having a separate binder for each group of students. If you are self-contained and only teaching one group of students, great, you only need one binder. But if you are departmentalized or you teach multiple groups of students, I do recommend having a separate binder for each group. It just helps keep things a little bit more organized. 
And personally, because I did teach different groups of students in fourth grade, I loved to color code those binder covers. So if you look back, this one is blue, but I had each of my blocks color coded. So I might have another one that's green and another one that's purple. And I would have that binder cover match the color of the class. So let's go ahead and start assembling this. The first thing we need to do is slip our binder cover in and keep in mind this one is in color but you could also print it on colored paper to save on colored ink so i'm just going to slip this into the front of the binder and then for my binder spine a little hack for you if you print binder spines on cardstock and then laminate them it is so much easier to insert into the side of the binder i have spent many times crinkling up paper as I tried to insert it in. Older binders are actually easier to do this with. So I'm just sliding it in and because it is laminated, I don't have to worry about it getting all crinkled up. You also can take, this is gonna sound so weird. I've used the end of like a big spoon. You know what I like the serving spoons and it was like flat and I would stick it in there to kind of stretch out the plastic before inserting in the binder spine. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Next, we're going to put our dividers in. So I'm just gonna open this binder and this is a brand new set of dividers. So I apologize for all the crinkliness. <laughs> okay, this page we don't need. And it does come with this kind of cover page where you could write the student names, for example, but because I printed the roster, I actually don't need this. So I'm gonna put that to the side as well. And now I can insert in my dividers like so. I'm going to put the student roster in first. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flip it over. Keep in mind, you could put the roster in a page protector. However, anytime you update the roster, you're gonna to have to print it out and put it back into the page protector. I eventually abandoned the page protector and would just hole punch it and put it right in. I'm the three hole punch version of Jim. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put those class data sheets. I like to have those right at the front of my binder so they were easy to access. And I personally would add any newer pages at the beginning rather than the end so that they were right on top when I needed them, if that makes sense. But you can put them in any order that makes sense for you. Let's go ahead, just make sure these are all like going the right way before we hole punch. Okay, I no longer need this extra roster. Put that to the side. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now using my actual operational hole punch, <laughs> we're just gonna punch through these. Okay, so I might have the grades overview at the front, just so I can at a glance see what the grades look like for my entire class. Then I might have their assessment data, followed by the data analysis and then maybe some monthly data and then clipboard cruising. That looks good. So I'm just going to insert these all in like so. All right, so now on my binder, I currently have my student roster and then I have those class data sheets. And if I wanted to add some tabs to these, I could. And of course I could put them in page protectors as I mentioned, but I will say one thing I don't like about having page protectors, just to show you, if I insert this in, it's going to extend beyond where my tabs are. So then I have to flip this before I can flip to any of the tabs. So personally, if I'm gonna use page protectors, I like them to be at the back of the binder, but we will come back to that. Now I'm gonna add those individual student data sheets. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip to student one, which is going to be Michael Scott. Now. I could put in a blank student data sheet like this for each student. It's something I could do at the beginning of the year before I even have a roster and I can fill it in as the year goes. But my personal preference is actually to print it out with the student information already filled in at the top. If you are interested, I do have this set of editable student data sheets. It's a Google Sheets template. You can use it digitally as well as printable. I will link it for you. But the great thing is, as you fill in the data, it automatically will fill in each student's data sheet. So as I fill in the student assessment data on this spreadsheet, it will automatically put these scores here on the student overview sheets. So you can just print it out as you go. I'm going to go ahead and hole punch this. And actually, I'm gonna add in this 
progress tracker. This is something where every student might not have it, but for the students that do, I'm gonna go ahead and add it into the binder. <laughs> there we go, okay. So I'm gonna add this here to Michael's section. Now, I'll be honest, with these, I have hand wrote them in. It's very time consuming. I prefer to print them like this, but to be completely transparent, I would only update these when I knew I had a meeting coming up where they needed to be updated or if I had a conference coming up. Otherwise, I would try at the end of each like marking period to print out an updated version for each student, but it was definitely not something I was keeping up with on a weekly or even a monthly basis because again, I had this digital. This binder was just to be able to take with me to meetings. So when I knew a meeting was coming up, printed out new copies. <laughs> the next thing I would add for each student would be work samples. So here's just an example of what that could look like. I did not put a copy of every assignment that the students did within my binder. I was very selective. Typically, I would either put in an assignment that was a very low score or maybe an abnormally low score for that student, or I would put in really good examples of work, right? It was both a positive and a negative, but whenever I was grading assignments, I would pull out any that I knew I wanted to make copies of. I would go make the copies and then send home the originals because even though you're sending them home, they're not always making it home. You know, you have some students where you find a whole big pile of crumpled papers at the bottom of their locker, whether it was on purpose or accident, I'm not here to judge, but by making a copy of those papers before I send them home, I'm making sure that I will be able to have it to reference in a meeting or a conference. So I'm just gonna hole punch this and add it in. I will say there were some students where I might not have had any work samples throughout the year. There's other students where I had many work samples that I would add in. It was different for every student, but I always love to have this data overview sheet at the very beginning, followed by any like progress trackers that I'm using and then work samples. That way I can actually show what I'm referring to during a meeting or a conference. The great thing is this data binder could then almost double as like a student portfolio. And at the end of the year, you could take out some of those papers and add it to their cumulative file. Or if they have a portfolio that travels with them to the next grade level, you already have papers ready. So obviously I would repeat this process for each of those students. And then my next tip is to add reference sheets. So I mentioned having page protectors at the back of the binder. So I'm gonna flip to the back. Now, when I say reference sheet, I mean something like grade level reading expectations or a list of assessment dates or rubrics that your district uses. Things that you might need to look at when you're analyzing data or you might wanna have handy during meetings or conferences. So this is an example of an FMP instructional level expectation for reading. It's just a nice chart. And I would always use this during conferences to say, hey, here's where your student is. And according to this chart, this is where they are at. I recommend for sheets like this to actually print multiple copies. So I have like five copies of this exact same sheet. I'm a lemma ding dong, making copies. And then put them into a page protector like so. That way it's in the binder, it's nice and protected, but you have those multiple copies. So during a meeting, if someone else wants to be able to look at it, you don't have to give them the one you're using. You can give them a blank copy or you can give extra copies to parents to be able to have. So once again, by having this at the back, it's not distracting or covering any of my tabs. I can still get to them, but at the very back, I have those reference sheets. And then while I'm using the binder or maybe analyzing data, I can always take this out, have it to the side to be able to use, and then easily add it back into the binder once I'm done. And now finally, let's talk about resetting the binder. Once I set up this data binder, I would reuse it year after year. So my binder cover would stay the same. I would reuse those same dividers. That's why I love having the numbered ones, but I would obviously have to clear out all of these sheets that I added in. Now, I'm gonna make a few different recommendations for you. First of all, for each student, you might actually wanna send home a copy of this data overview sheet to parents. I think a lot of parents would find it helpful. And you also might wanna consider passing along a copy to next year's teacher because they may find it helpful as well. If you're not gonna do either of those or if you still have the original, make sure any papers that have individual student information on them get 
shredded. Do not just throw them in the trash can, you need to shred them. I also mentioned that you could take some of those work samples and once again, you could send them home, you could send them on to the next grade level, you could add them to student cumulative folders or portfolios. But once again, if you're not going to do any of those options, make sure they get shredded. But that is it. These are my student data binders. I will have everything linked down in the description box, including the binder covers, the dividers, all of these sheets that you see, so the roster, the grades overview, assessment data, data analysis, monthly data, clipboard cruising, and the student data overview sheets, these are all available in my student data sheets. Google Sheets, templates, I forget the exact name, but I will link that for you down in the description box. These are just the printed versions, but it can be used digitally as well. I hope you found this video helpful. I don't know, it kind of felt all over the place, but maybe that's just because I was paranoid about this other camera falling down on me the entire time. If you did find it helpful though, give it a thumbs up, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.